Namaste. Well, this is like cutting-edge concept art. This is like a view of reality that is so radical that, I mean, it's probably not supported anywhere. But then consciousness doesn't need support. Consciousness is the support of everything else. But consciousness is absolute. And the proof of that is it doesn't depend on anything else. It's fine all by itself. It doesn't even need an object. Then it's not consciousness anymore. It's Turiya. It's Brahman. It's unconditioned awareness, objectless awareness, the absolute. So, in our culture, we have a very limited idea of the four states of consciousness. The four states are Jagrat, external consciousness of the world through the senses, Svapna, mental consciousness or dream consciousness, depending on whether it appears together with uh, Jagrat. When it appears with Jagrat, we call it thinking. But it's actually just dreaming. It's just that we're also awake at the same time. <laughs> then there's Sushupti. Sushupti means consciousness, but without an object. There are no objects in Sushupti. Now, Sushupti can coexist with the other two states as well. For example, when we are asleep, what's really happening is that we are in Swapna consciousness or dream consciousness, but the Jagrat consciousness is being covered by Sushupti. So therefore, we're unaware of the senses, unaware of the world, unaware of our ego, <laughs> and all of our dreams that we have while awake. They seem to fall into these two different categories, dreams while we're sleeping and dreams while we're awake. So we call dreams while asleep dreams and we claim no responsibility for them. <laughs> they happen to us. There's no ego, so there's no effort, no action. Everything just happens. But dreaming while awake is called thinking. And we have all kinds of rules about that. For example, we're not supposed to sleep more than eight hours a night. If somebody does, they're lazy, right? They're given this epithet, lazy. Yeah, lazy bamnya. If somebody dreams too much while awake, they're called a daydreamer or just a plain dreamer. And if they dream of the wrong things, oh my goodness, I mean, that could be judged as anything from uh, subversion to psychosis. We have a whole range of epithets and categories that we uh, put the dreams, the unauthorized dreams into. Now, what does this have to do with spiritual life? Oh boy, everything. Because what we call spiritual life is basically a dream. It's a dream consciousness. For example, in the following episodes of this series, Dreamland, we're going to share some of our spiritual visions. And where are these spiritual visions? What are these spiritual visions? They're dreams. But they are dreams of a specific quality that we value 
because it reveals aspects of reality that are impossible to understand in any other way. Dreams from God are visions or dreams that involve God or in which God appears in some form have a special quality to them. First of all, they usually occur last thing at night, just before awakening, and they usually result in one's waking up out of astonishment. <laughs> and furthermore, these dreams have a specific quality, which is hard to define, but it's the quality of absoluteness that they seem so true and so real that you cannot doubt them. I mean, you can intellectually doubt them, but emotionally, you know they're real. They're a whole different quality than the other dreams that happen while you're asleep. Then there's dreams that happen while you're awake about God. We call that meditation. <laughs> So every religion and every spiritual path has a set of authorized dreams. And you're supposed to think about these dreams while you're awake. And then the hope is that by doing these dreams while awake, we will influence our dreams while we're asleep. Because I think everybody knows deep down intuitively that this material world, this external world of Jagrat consciousness, is not real. And the proof that it's not real is that it disappears when we go to sleep. Sure. It gets covered by Sushupti. And in that mode, Sushupti appears as ignorance. And during uh, Swapna sleep, or dreaming sleep, our mind processes the impressions that we gathered through the senses in the previous day or session of Jagrat consciousness. <laughs> and it compresses those into a seed. And then when we enter deep sleep or sushupti, that seed is reviewed and becomes the root or at least a very strong influence on our conscious experience, our Jagrat consciousness experience the following day. I mean, dreams have a definite influence on our waking consciousness. If you've ever had a scary dream, like being chased by a tiger or a demon or something like that, and you wake up and your body is filled with fear energy, you're like, <laughs> isn't it? But one who cultivates Shiva by chanting his name, contemplating his form and pastimes, qualities, and attributes doesn't have bad dreams. In fact, one of the thousand names of Shiva is one who kills bad dreams. So dreaming then is an important part of spiritual life. And in the advanced stages of spiritual life, it is the cutting edge of spiritual progress. One invents or develops or manifests a dream of God which is unique to oneself alone, which is completely original and this dream allows one to manifest or express one's deep inner nature to perfection. You could say it is a, a world in which you could live happily forever. This world, this earthly reality, is not a happy place. There's a lot of suffering here, a lot of injustice in untruth, all kinds of power plays and deception and maneuvering and strategy. It's awful. The competition 
why we all have basically enough to eat, and if we weren't so competitive, everybody would have enough to eat, a place to live, and so on. It's just this stupid competition over money. I mean, whose dream is that? Certainly not mine. But some rascals dreamed that up and then made it happen to harass and enslave the rest of us. So these dreams have a definite influence on reality. Somebody dreamed up computers. Somebody dreamed up the iPhone. So dreams can be creative, but they can also be destructive, depending on the intention behind them. Now, when I say dreams, I also mean thoughts, conscious thoughts. But if we observe carefully our conscious thoughts, the character, the nature, the flavor, the mood of our conscious thoughts becomes the material for our dreams. And in the advanced stages of bhakti, one begins to dream these wonderful dreams that are, like I say, an expression of one's deepest nature. And at this point, all bad dreams disappear. However, the problem is, in life, in Jagrat consciousness, people are envious. They're jealous. They don't want us to have these kind of liberating dreams. So they create situations where that kind of dreaming is discouraged. For example, in religious groups, the scriptures or books that they go by present authorized dreams. These thoughts and dreams that are okay to have. And then everybody just follows like, you know, lemmings and <laughs> jumping off a cliff. They follow the authorized dreams. Now, these are a place to start. They are examples of some spiritual dreams that people had in the past and are considered exemplary. But wait a minute. If they could have an original dream about God, why can't we have an original dream about God? But we find in practice this is strongly discouraged by religious groups, religious organizations, established churches, and spiritual paths. And why is this? Because they want to control you. They want to make a nice environment where everybody's thinking the same thoughts, feeling the same emotions, and having the same dreams. There's only one problem with that. It oppresses our individuality, our real self, not our egos, although that can get involved too. But there is no ego in authentic dream consciousness, isn't it? There's no ego because it's effortless and it's beautiful and it is the fulfillment of all our desires. Psychologists would say, oh, it's just an adjustment. It's a way of experiencing a compensation for the things that you didn't experience, the desires that you didn't fulfill in this life, in this reality. Well, that's assuming that Jagrat consciousness is reality. But I'm here to tell you that it's the lowest state of consciousness. That's why all spiritual paths ultimately recommend meditation, which is a dream that goes beyond the material world and contacts God directly. So this is the underlying philosophy. This is the underlying vision, the view that underlies this series called Dream Time. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shaptihi Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.